Welcome back to Area Diesel Service. So today we're going to bring you a little bit different style of video. So in one of our recent videos we mentioned or we asked of you to keep an eye out for other content creators that we could maybe collaborate with or who we could give a helping hand to and immediately after putting that out there you guys came through in, in big orders. If you haven't been following along, fellow YouTube content creator, Jim's Automotive Machine Shop Incorporated, Jamzy, has been having a fit with a 210 Alice Chalmers. So several of you hit us up and let us know that they were potentially having some injection pump trouble, and we reached out to them, and unfortunately, we missed it by about four hours. So they were in fact having some injection pump troubles and they had just sent it off to another shop to be repaired. That was about maybe two weeks ago and the situation has further developed and they did reach out to us for some expertise or opinions or ideas and that's why we're bringing this content to you today. As we start going through this, you'll see we have several different things wrong here. We have pistons and cylinder walls scored. We have scoring from the rings where the end gap was too small and the rings butted together. We've got failure of the liner O-rings. We had a little bit of coolant into the oil. Um, just several different things here that have all happened. Yes, there's a whole bunch of things here have come together, but I think when we sort this out, we will find one thing that started the snowball that turned into what we have here now. So some of the backstory, as I understand it, Jim picked up this 210 Alice Chalmers a couple, three years ago under the assumption that it just needed to have the clutch replaced. They bought it, tore into it, replaced the clutch, they looked at the engine while they had it out, considered rebuilding it, but because they were advised the engine was fine, they thought better of it, put a clutch in it, and tried to send it back to work. After putting it back to work, they later discovered that they did have an injection pump problem. So they had the classic flex ring failure, plugged up the return connector, pump seized up, or I should say hydraulically locked up, and the thing was out of commission. They sent the pump off, had the pump repaired. When they got the pump back, they discovered that it was timed 180 degrees out. So when they went to install the pump, instead of timing it to the number one cylinder, they had to time it to the number six cylinder. Theoretically, not that big of a deal. They got the pump installed, machine started and running, and then they discovered that the engine was tired, had excessive blow-by, and it did, in fact, need overhauled. Back in the shop, pull the engine out, overhaul it, reassemble, retime to number six cylinder, and put the thing back to work. So they put it out in the field, and they didn't run it very far, and the engine seized up. So they let the engine cool off, started it up again, put it back to work, seized up again. Back into the shop it comes, gets torn down for a thorough inspection. Go over and check all that out on their channel. A pretty interesting series of events there. Ultimately what happened was catastrophic cylinder failure. Uh, you can see in their videos several of the cylinders, pistons were just hammered. The liners were destroyed, catastrophic failure. Bearings, crank and rods, all that stuff looked okay, but they had a significant failure in the combustion chamber and all things leading towards excessive temperature and excessive combustion pressures. Probably most noteworthy during the teardown and inspection, they were looking on top of the piston. They could see the injector spray pattern was up on top of the piston and outside of the bowl. So that was probably the most interesting visual aid that I saw during the teardown and disassembly. Given the circumstances and the evidence that they were finding in the engine, uh, they opted to send the injection pump out to another shop to have it gone through again with the instruction to 
try and do some type of analysis before disassembly so they could potentially or hopefully find the smoking gun with this failure. That is where we missed it by four hours and it had already gone off to a different injection pump shop and unfortunately there was miscommunication there. That shop, the way I understand it, just tore the pump down and started a normal overhaul process. The investigation, the analysis, the smoking gun we were all hoping to find was kind of lost. At this point we don't really know if there was an injection pump timing issue component issue, assembly issue, uh, whatever the case was. It was kind of disassembled before we got a chance to learn how it was calibrated or assembled. So they have since gotten that pump back from the second pump shop. They have reassembled the engine, new pistons and liners, whatever other new components went back into it. They've installed the injection pump again and at this point they have started the engine and it is running. We haven't heard any test drive or dyno or field work results. I think right now as of today it's just been fired off in the shop. We're still kind of waiting to hear what more may come of that. But they did reach out to us and asked us a couple of questions and in discussion with them we decided that maybe the best way to approach it was to create a video to show them some of the things we're trying to talk about and explain on the phone. And in doing so, we thought that it would probably make some worthy content to share with the rest of the world. Engine description and specifications. This is a 210 Alice Chalmers, circa early 70s. It runs a 3500 series Alice Chalmers manufactured engine. That is a 426 cubic inch engine, say 7 liters, rated at I think 120 horsepower. 2200 RPMs, 16 to 1 compression. That's your background on what this engine is. The first question from Jim was, what should the thickness of this injector nozzle chamber gasket be? This is the gasket that goes on the end of the injector and seals it into the combustion chamber. When they first pulled the injectors out, they measured this gasket and they found that it was 55 thousandths of an inch thick. Somewhere throughout the course of this scenario, the injectors went out to another shop and got rebuilt. They came back with 35 thousandths of an inch thick nozzle chamber gaskets. The question from Jim was, which one of those two is correct? So we looked up what part number does this application and this injector call for. Pulled one off the shelf. We stock Agco or Alice Chalmers brand new OEM nozzle chamber gasket. And we said, all right, well, we'll just measure the one we have and we'll let him know which one of those two is correct. And what we found was 65 thousandths of an inch. So we have a third nozzle chamber gasket thickness. We believe 65 thousandths of an inch is correct. This is OEM first fit. It is what this thing calls for. We're going to say that this is the absolute correct thickness. Why this is or could be important is if you watch their videos you saw the evidence where the injector spray pattern was up out of the bowl and evident on the top of the piston. So if the injector nozzle chamber gasket is too thick, you're going to raise the injector up out of the bowl and the thinner it gets, the further down into the bowl it would go. Both of his measurements, 55 and 35, are thinner and that would technically drop the injector further down into the chamber. It's not uh, correct, we're going to say, as far as absolute OEM specification, uh, but we don't believe that that's an issue. If anything, it would have put it further down into the bowl and uh, would not have caused the issue that he's experiencing. However, it may be noteworthy to mention there were a couple of different styles of these injectors. They have different names from different folks, Series 1, Series 2, early and late. Ultimately, there are different lengths here, so we're going to let them know they should probably verify injector length before they get too carried away because that absolutely 
could cause the situation that they've encountered. As far as nozzle chamber gasket thickness, 20 or 30 thousandths, uh, we don't think that's the problem. And if it was an issue, again, they've erred on the side of further down into the bowl. So we're going to kind of rule that out. So the second question from Jim was, is there anything inside of this injection pump that could have changed or become out of adjustment in regards to injection timing because they felt like when they had the pump first rebuilt after the flex ring failure but prior to the engine overhaul they felt like everything was was okay now they couldn't really get a valid test because the engine was so worn out and had such excessive blow by they never really got to do any work with it but they kind of speculated that the pump was likely okay on the old engine but when it went on to the new engine, they felt like maybe something had changed. Question two, is there anything in the pump that could have changed? Short answer, not really. Pretty tough for us to know what, what actually happened in this situation. But after the fact, from a thousand miles away, it certainly points to what is likely excessively advanced injection pump timing or potentially on a whim, if somehow this engine got the wrong injector, too short of an injector, maybe, but most likely injection pump timing was significantly advanced and injection uh, was occurring up out of the bowl, excessive cylinder temperatures and pressures. That seems to be exactly what the case is here. So the guys over at Jim's I think are a lot like us in that they are... Uh, probably overly curious and intrinsic learners and always striving to gain more knowledge. So in our conversation with them, trying to explain some of the thoughts or concepts over the phone, that's where this, this video came about. We're going to get our resident rotary pump expert up here and we're gonna kinda of go through at a high level how this thing works how some of these timing positions, orientations could have got garbled up and what we think is likely the cause of this situation or maybe the most probable cause of this situation. We'll grab Corey and we'll meet you back up here. As promised, resident pump expert. This is Corey. I've got a couple of things from my conversation with Jim. He's going to walk us through from a thousand feet how this thing works and some of the things that we speculate may have gone wrong in the original pump overhaul that Jim had completed. Corey, first thing I think, give us just a, just a general functionality walkthrough. What is that? How does it work? Okay, so this here would be a DB style standardine injection pump. We got our tank going to your fuel filter to your inlet of the pump here. From your inlet, it goes into your transfer pump, builds up pressure anywhere from 10 pounds at cranking to roughly 70 pounds per square inch uh, full load depending on the pump. Once it goes through your transfer pump, it builds pressure, goes through the head and rotor, which is then being controlled by the metering valve right here. So, the metering valve controls how much fuel goes where and whether it gets fuel or whether it doesn't. So, pressure builds up, goes through your head, through the metering valve. If that's in the run position, then it goes through the pump, through your head and rotor, and then down through the rotor, which then charges your plungers as it's spinning in the cam. As your plungers come out and charge, they go in and out dependent on the cam lobes, which then forces fuel back through the rotor and out through your distributing ports. Now, that's just the pumping side of it. There's a lot more that goes into it. Uh, we have your governor, so you have your weight cage, your weights, up to your governor arm, which is then hooked to your metering valve. And you also have your cam lobe and your advance. So as you speed up, builds more transfer pressure, 
which then builds more pressure going to your advance. As you build up more pressure, you get more advance. As you slow it down and build less pressure, you get less advance. Pretty simple concept, thankfully. As you advance and go off from advance, that's where it changes your injection timing to your injectors. So that's kind of a general aspect of that. There's, you know, you can get anywhere from four degrees of advance to, let's say, eight or nine degrees, depending on the pump. Then you have also your weights, which are in your weight cage. So as you speed up, eventually, once you go to high idle, your weights open up, which then forces, it forces on this little sleeve here and on your governor arm, pushes this this way, which then pushes your governor arm towards the back of the pump, which then goes to shut off. So that's why a lot of times whenever the flex ring is out, you get real erratic RPMs because your weight cage is kind of swinging independently from the hub it's supposed to be connected to. So that's why it'll really kind of surge almost because it's moving like this where it's supposed to be just moving continuously. This one here has a shutoff solenoid which also whenever you turn the key off it pushes your governor arm forward, pushing your medium valve forward to shut off. Or if let's say you didn't have a solenoid and you had it on a shutoff lever or your throttle lever, same concept, just different design. So that's kind of a general rule of how this pump operates. Uh, it's very dependent on fuel quality especially the better fuel quality you have the longer your pump is going to last and the cleaner it's going to stay so the better it's going to operate throughout the whole process of you running the engine. I have a couple different things here. I have two different heads. Uh, I also have some advanced components. Show them the, the transfer pump. Okay. The transfer pump he was talking yeah. about Transfer pump pressure is what is driving advance. Mm -hmm. So transfer pump is just a eccentric ring and Some veins, veins, just a mm -hmm. vein style pump like any other hydraulic pump. The faster the transfer pump turns, right? This is all mm -hmm. linked to the engine. The faster the transfer pump turns, the higher the pressure becomes. The pressure is a critical adjustment in the calibration of the pump and the transfer pump pressure is what operates on the advanced piston because transfer pump pressure is relevant to engine speed and timing advance specification is also relevant to engine speed that's how we're controlling it. The engine's driving the transfer pump when the engine turns faster we give it more advance and the advance changes you know the combustion characteristics right right inject the fuel earlier in the compression stroke that's kind of crash course advance and then like he was saying delivery is determined by a combination of throttle position and the weight so the centrifugal force of the speed of the right. pump is what's throwing the weights out and the pump has the ability to kind of calculate these things right mm. what is engine speed what is throttle position and what is position of the weights and in calculating all those things it knows where to position the metering valve to determine the amount of fuel to deliver to the engine. So. Yeah because that's also dependent on your governor spring as well because you know there's really light governor springs and there's really stiff governor mm -hmm. springs so depending on what weights you have in it you know there's five or six different styles of weights how many rpms the engine runs at you know at full load high idle you know, it's all kind of a, an engineered aspect that it all has to operate connectedly, you know, correctly also to make sure that it functions at least good enough on the engine to make it operate the way it's supposed to. Fair, fairly advanced little mechanical widget. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty involved. We talked about how the advance works. What are the things where uh, timing is implicated or where are there opportunities to botch the timing or how do you time the pump? Show us those okay. steps or components. You have different parts of the pump that affect your timing. Guarantee there's two different types of timing. There's your static timing due to your timing mark on the weight cage, 
and then there's let's say your operational timing which would be from your advance first rule of thumb you know you always talk about okay flexion going bad pull the pump off well you check your timing mark to make sure that's correct as well there's two different styles of pumps here of head rotors this is a tang drive pump the db style head so you have a single tang you have a dot on your rotor right here and you have a dot on your drive shaft so that's kind of your one major timing aspect dot has to line up with dot if dot doesn't line up with dot you're 180 out on a tang drive style pump now on a spline drive style pump like this one here which, which is what jim's pump is correct which is also why we're kind of concerned because there is a very small little tab right here, which this timing pin is similar to this, has this little tiny tab right here, which then fits into the end of your drive shaft. If for some reason that tab is sheared off, like it was misaligned previously, then you have a lot more room for error when matching your drive shaft up with the rotor because like as right here obviously the drive shaft doesn't go in until that little tab lines up so do you ever see that little key broken or missing oh yeah all the time I would say I, mean, I don't see a lot of spline drive pumps they're not as common but I would say out of 10 pumps at least half of them have that little nub sheared off. It's a very which, common problem. Which then allows you to set the orientation of the drive shaft to the rotor right. potentially incorrectly. So Correct. There's it's, one opportunity. Yeah, very easy to set that in incorrectly if that nub is broke off there. Because then it'll just slide in instead of actually stopping and then fitting in. So yeah, that's very critical. You know, some guys would probably say they could still get it in time but it's a lot easier to get it out of time so hey, so you could put it back together without that little pin oh yeah you can yeah. it's just uh, you're taking a lot more of a risk yeah. so that's one area yeah. where you could potentially botch the timing where right. else can you go wrong so another way is your relationship from the weight cage to the rotor especially on a C style like this because this can go on 360 degrees doesn't make this weight cage does not care how it goes on however the engine cares a lot so you know your line on your hub here has to line up with that timing pin so if you're a tooth off either way it can make a significant difference on your timing or if you put it on 180 out let's say even that way so that's another major way that that can be misaligned out of time as opposed to the more common db is yeah. that keyed um or how's that not necessarily uh like this one has a, a notch here normally they have a line so you just match the line with the line so you know, that's a lot easier a lot more foolproof can you get that one 180 yeah. out you can still get that 180 out it probably has happened. So you got two opportunities. Right. 50-50 on this one. Yeah, and a lot This more. one, yeah, you got uh, one in lunch. 20. Yeah, exactly. All right, so there's two places right. where you could potentially get this set up out of time. And then basically the last one is whenever you move on to the graph here. So, yeah, so that's just a timing wheel. It's how I time the weight cage. Put the correct timing mark on it so with this being a triangle again you can put this weight cage however on here the weight cage won't know any different but you have to put that on the correct way otherwise your timing mark is going to be skewed significantly i know from experience that you know it has to go on this particular way and then that will give me my correct timing mark for whenever I go to mark it and scribe it. So if, if and you're... There's a, and there's a reference. Yeah. We'll zoom you in. But there's a reference mark and line in there that yeah. tells you where to put 
the pointer. Right. But it's one of those, okay, the line's here, do you put it on the left side of the line or the right side of the yeah. line? If you don't know that, then... And that, and that mistake, run through the math. Yeah, so this is just a, a weight cage I had back in the room. It already has a tiny mark on it. Uh, whenever I put it on the correct way and spin it around, so I line up my line here. So presumably, this is time to 297 and a half degrees. That's what this timing mark is set at, at the correct point here. So if I move it one tooth to the other side of the line, it is now time to uh, 312 and a half. So that's what? 15 degrees? Yeah. 15 yeah. degrees difference between one tooth. So we'll, we'll bring you in close, but what he's talking about, the, the, the mark here to line up with the triangle, it, there's two choices. The, the, uh, the line does not point right at the triangle, so you either have right. to go to the left of it or to the right of it, and if you go to the wrong side, you're 15 degrees. Right 15 degrees is enough to smoke an engine much in the fashion that we've seen, so... Yeah, because 15 degrees here is going to be 30 degrees on the engine. Yeah, and that's another thing we haven't spoken about. We're talking pump speed and pump timing, but the injection pump turns at half the speed of the engine or the crankshaft, so injection pump is uh, you know, part of the firing order, right? Mm -hmm. Camshaft specific, half of engine speed for every revolution of the engine. That only spends half. Half, yeah. Yep. But anyway, so that's uh, amplified by a factor of two. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why on my degree wheel from the factory, the spec is you're only allowed one degree either way of the specified timing mark, which I preferably like to stay within half a degree. You know, half a degree here is one degree on the engine, one degree here is two degrees on the engine, which a lot of times you can make up for that because there are slots which is basically the last form of timing other than your timing gear if it has any play to adjust your timing because a lot of these standine housings have slots in them it's where you can pull the pump one way or the other to line up your lines so yeah if you're one degree off here you can just tweak it a little bit and voila you're there or even if it's lined up perfectly you still might have to tweak yeah. it a little bit to make yeah. it run right yeah you know not uncommon to yeah. have to, to have to tune them in on the flange right so once you if you're starting with a new component or if you're starting with a used component mm -hmm. we always go back and verify right that the mark yeah. is there and the mark shows itself here yeah I so would. when you're on engine you pop this cover off yeah and it reveals what he would engrave on this on the edge of this so probably in Jim's videos you've seen timing marks where they've confirmed the timing so if he was rebuilding their pump he would put their component on his graph confirm that the mark is correct right if it's not correct buff it off and re-engrave it engraving it or theoretically not confirming it is another so there's three four mm -hmm. pretty easy places right to botch the timing yeah that's why this styles a lot easier to handle you know there's a, a little bit less chance of you messing it up but there still obviously is definitely ways to do it and technically the last thing that we haven't talked about is putting your cam in backwards because putting your cam in backwards going from clockwise to counterclockwise will also affect your timing the cams have an arrow on each side so depending on whether it's a clockwise pump or counterclockwise pump that's what direction you put the cam on the head and rotor. So if you have a clockwise pump and you put this in incorrectly, then it sometimes will drastically change the point of injection, basically, of where it'll try to pump. If it is trying to pump here instead of, you know, over here, then technically what happens is the ports on your rotor don't line up with the ports on your head, which will then 
cause either late or early injection or yeah, bad, you know, bad, 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 bad injection yeah. or so what he's talking about this is the the cam that the pumping elements roll around in so there's elements pointed out and as they rotate they are um, depressed and extended mm -hmm. across these ramps so maybe that's the orientation it's supposed to go in but you put it in backwards and now you've moved the ramps right. into a different spot so number five opportunity to miss time this is also we talked about transfer pressure and timing piston when the pump is trying to advance the timing this is what it's operating on down in the bottom of the pump there's a piston that goes perpendicular to the to the drive shaft and it's just moving this cam and that's all that's happening mm -hmm. to advance the timings. If you've got it in backwards from where it's supposed to go you may start off wrong and then when you start to advance you may go even further out right. and it can get... We talked about the fact that this pump was originally timed to the number six cylinder and Jim had a hard time back when they first got it back. Did they scribe this component? Did they scribe this wrong? Or did they have this in the wrong orientation on the head or was the drive shaft in the wrong orientation on yep. the rotor? There's a lot of variables. What's the implication of the cam? Right. And that's where experience pays. I mean there's just so many opportunities. So you know they've asked us to kind of chime in or you know speculate and from here mm -hmm. all we can do is speculate. There's right. so many opportunities. I, I wish and, and they wish that we would have uh, hit them up just a day sooner and we could have answered these questions definitively but I think from here it looks like in one of these different possibilities the injection pump timing was missed mm -hmm. by, a, by a significant enough amount to bring combustion up out of the bowl and, and smoke the engine. The only other timing component we didn't really talk about was piston. There's different Right. arrangements of advanced piston components yeah. that make up for different specifications of timing yeah, in advance. You have all sorts of different combinations. So there's different heights of your power piston, there's different heights of your spring piston. You could have two pistons that still give you only five degrees, but if this one is shorter than than another one, then technically your zero point is different. So your starting point is different, but your final point is still only, let's say, five degrees, but yet five degrees in this situation might get you, like, let's say, you know, if it is timed to 24 and a half degrees, like his bouncer was, with this, with the right combination, if you switch it to a different one, it might actually be off a degree or two. And so different heights, mean that you go from let's say a pump that only needs four degrees compared to one that needs 10 degrees well, that's definitely the biggest reason why there's different lengths like i said different and zero there's point. yeah there's like an infinite number of combinations oh, of yeah. components and pistons and heights springs and pressures mm -hmm. rpms transfer pump pressures pump test plans right we hear about the torque curve and the advanced curve yeah. there's just they're all different every one of them is different and any number of error in mm -hmm. any of those of those pistons of those springs of the transfer pump transfer pump pressure mm -hmm. calibration I mean there's just yeah because there's even like the transfer pump spring there's different ones of those so they're gonna change the curve of when your pressure comes in so you might end up at the same final pressure but it might go from 10 20 40 60 instead of 10 20 30 40 50 60 it might be a totally different curve which will again affect your advance you know we don't know who who rebuilt the pump either time but it's never safe to assume that the parts that come out of the core or the pump you were given all right were correct to begin yeah. with so part of a quality repair is always confirmation that the components that were in it are of the correct specification, measurement, dimension, whatever. Because if you yep. get in a pump and you put it right back together like it was and test it off and it's fine, it doesn't mean it's going to work right because it had the wrong stuff in it, right? Yep. Garbage in, garbage out. You got to verify every time that everything mm -hmm. is what it calls for. Yep. And uh, if you don't, it'll burn you. Never assume it. Never assume it. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, unfortunately, 
we don't really know, right? We can speculate all day long. Yeah. I think the probably the safest assumption is that one of these steps got missed by a tooth or a mark or a or a number or whatever. Mm -hmm. That one small miss can wreak havoc, right? Yeah. These guys had a bad day. Uh, they seized up a fresh engine. Unfortunately, the trail is gone, right? We didn't get the pump. Their, their shop didn't tear it down the way they had asked. So we may never know unless the problem happens again, but knock on wood, they've, they've got it cured. All right, thanks, Corey. No problem. There you have it. Speculatory opinion on what has occurred over at Jim's Automotive Machine Shop. If you have not been following along through their videos and their content, please jump over there, give them a like, tell them that we sent you. If you need to get a hold of us, please don't hesitate to do so. You can call us at 800-637-2658. You can log on to our website at areadieselservice.com where you'll find a tremendous amount of high quality information and the ability to chat instantly with a diesel engine expert through the button in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. You can drop us an email at parts at areadiesel.com or you can visit any of our locations in Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana. So much like this video came to be, if you see any other content creators out there that could use our help with any pumps, injectors, turbos, engines, what have you, please don't hesitate to tag us in a comment, send us an email and let us know. We really like doing this collaboration stuff. One of the things we didn't really anticipate was that many of you would like to support us, but you don't have an injection pump failure or an injector issue. So many of you have reached out and asked us if we had any swag to offer. So for those of you that have asked, we have added to our website a couple of different hat options. Summer hat, mesh back, area diesel service, and full back. We're gonna call it a winter hat. We'll drop you a link in the description where you can go to our website and check out these hats. Pretty slick. So that's it. Thanks for watching.